week, the focus is franchising. Ko Anthony Royal Tene, he mihi mahana no kia koto. So right now, we're going to talk further to Simon Lord. Now Simon has worked around the world in franchising for over 30 years. Simon, that just about qualifies you as the co-martua of franchising. So, so tell me, sir, Simon, how did you get into franchising? When I f joined my first franchise, which was a company in the UK, I didn't actually know anything about franchising. I joined it on a, uh, um, as a marketing executive. Uh, but what I rapidly found was that as a way of doing business, it combined local individual people who had enormous commitment and a financial stake in the business with the ability to band together and operate as a large company. And that appealed to me straight away. It's very much about relationships. And I've worked in franchising ever since, and I can't imagine actually working in any other way. So, so over the 30 years, have you seen any differences? There must have been some differences over, over that sort of period of time. Well, that was back in the UK. I've been in New Zealand for 20 years now. Uh, when I arrived in New Zealand 20 years ago, um, it was certainly the case that franchising wasn't very well understood uh, by people here. There were a few homegrown franchises, there were a few of the big overseas ones. But in general, uh, franchising was almost a dirty word. So, so in, that, in that time, franchising in New Zealand wasn't really taking off? It hadn't started to take off. I think it really started to take off from the early 90s. Um, we had the development of some of the lawn mowing and home services type franchises which really popularised the concept and made people realise, hey, there is something here that actually is a very powerful way of doing business. So, so today, so today um, how, does we, how do we compare with the rest of the world in franchising? You'll probably be surprised to know that New Zealand has more franchise systems per head of population than any other country in the world. I think franchising is a way of doing business uniquely suits the New Zealand approach that, hey, you can do anything, that you can get out and work for yourself. But aren't you yourself. just buying a job? Aren't you just, you know, paying money over so that you can have a job? Well, lawn mowing rounds. You know, as kids, we always thought about doing lawn mowing rounds. That's how we made money. And, and now we've franchised it. Now yeah. we've franchised it. And when I first heard about the idea of franchise lawn mowing rounds, I thought that was the most peculiar idea, I have to say. Um, but if you consider the advantages that a lawn mowing franchisee can get in terms of their training to operate in the most efficient way, in terms of maximising their time on the job, in terms of having somebody else handling their bookings for them. Um, may, it's, it's if, if you are a lawn mowing franchisee, the only time you're actually earning money is when you are pushing your lawn mower. So, so what you're that. saying is that you, you're freeing yourselves up, the, the, the franchisees, to actually spend more time doing the work than Absolutely. having to worry about all the bookwork behind you've got it. Not only the bookwork, but also the scheduling, the marketing, the bringing in of new cu customers. Many lawn mowing franchises will actually go out and do the quoting for you as well. So there are all those advantages that maximise the time you are spending making money. But there, there are some franchises that have got a bad rap. There have yeah. been franchises, yes. So, so which ones would you really want to keep away from? I don't think you can generalise and say those franchises don't work, these franchises do. What you have to do is look at finding a business type and a particular franchise that suits your own abilities and needs and financial um, uh, f financial abilities. So what can you afford? What, ca what sort of return do you want? How much what sort of cost? hours are you going to want, want to put in and so on? So, so how much is it going to cost to buy hey, a franchise? You what's, can, what's you can buy a franchise for under $5,000. You can spend over half a million dollars or more on one. The fr franchising is a method of marketing and distribution that can be applied to almost any type of business. What sort of business do you want? That's mm. the question you have to ask yourself first of all. But are people making real money out of this? I mean, if, is it just moving from a, from a, being an employee to being somebody who, you know, because you've still got to get up in the morning to go and do your own You've got to get yourself up in the morning. It's, it's worse than having a boss there standing, um, standing uh, looking at the clock at the door as you come in. You have to get yourself out of bed. You have to make the sales happen for yourself. Um, yeah, let's just talk about, so just talk about um, intellectual property for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, a franchise, many of these franchises are built upon the, the concept that they've got some brilliant idea. Is it, is it about ideas, intellectual property, or is it about systems and processes and, and marketing? No, you don't franchise an idea. An idea is the last thing that you buy. What you buy is something that has been proven. It's a brand, it's a system, it's a way of operating a business 
um, its products that are proven that have a proven demand and so on. You look at, um, for example, the McDonald's brand which we used earlier. If you put the McDonald's brand over the door, then you are going to get far more people in through the door on the first day mm. than you are if you put Anthony's Burgers mm. over the door. Mm. Well, just talking about burgers, what are some of the other examples? I mean, uh, Burger Fuel is uh, is another example. There, there have been a number of different um, different franchises develop out of the fast food area. Burger Fuel is a New Zealand founded company, uh, which has now gone overseas. In fact, I was in one of their outlets in Dubai just the other day. Uh, they are in Dubai. They're now in Saudi Arabia. They're in Australia. They are trying to establish themselves as a New Zealand company with an yeah. international reputation. So, so it looks like they're, they're quite successful. They've um, done well. What makes franchisors and franchisees successful? Two different, uh, two different questions there, really. Um, for a franchisor to be successful, they have to be very system focused. They have to be very focused on the success of their franchisees. They have to be leaders, they have to be motivators, they have to be system developers, they have to be administrators, yeah, they yeah. have to be site selectors. Huge range of skills are needed from franchisors. Franchisees need to be focused on maximizing the business so, within so their they're, own they're area. So they're the operators, so they're, they're the, the good They're, they're the operators. Yeah, they have will be good at managing their businesses. They have to be able to learn a system, apply a system, and then exploit it, it to the maximum. One last question. I've asked this of everybody. What's the best piece of advice that you've had over the last 30 years? It wouldn't be about franchising particularly. It would be about business in general. And I run my own small business. And that would be a sale is, is not a sale until the money's in the bank. Great advice. Thanks, Simon, for coming along today. Kamuti te whakata poto, ko ngā koinga korero mō he wharipakehi. When we come back, We'll be joined by Bill Sampson from Tauranga. <music> Tahuri mai anō, you're watching here Faripahi. Ko Anthony Rolaho. My next manuhiri is Bill Sampson, who's been running his career business in Tauranga. Now he's won the Westpac Supreme Franchise of the Year award for his mahi. His customers love him, and he's so keen on his pakihi that he's training his daughters to follow in his footsteps. Tēnā koe, Bill. Kia ora. Now, mate, you don't look like a typical businessman, you know, but clearly you're damn good at it. How did you get into this career business? Well, my father-in-law introduced me to Fastway Tauranga. He owned a franchise before me. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and, then, and then what happened? Did you, you were following him around? Uh, yeah, well, I was a relief driver f for about uh, two weeks, and um, a franchise came up. So, how, how did you make that decision when the franchise came up? How did you make the decision? Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Well, I just put myself into it. You know what I mean? I, I took the opportunity to buy that franchise, and I just took it. Yeah. And so, had you looked at any other business before, or did you just know this is the one? Oh. I'd, Knew myself, this was me. You know what I mean. Having to deal with my own customer base, um, it was really established, and just needed a little bit of hard work and to operate it all and to get it up and running properly. So now, because you're a franchise, you get um, the the franchise company Fastway to give you a hand. How have you found working with Fast Fastway as a franchise? Or um, it was pretty good actually. They've given me a lot of support especially from head office. Uh, they give us a lot of training, uh, how to use our scanners, how to bring on new customers. And T tell, me, tell me a little bit about um, the, the financial side. So you had to buy the franchise? Yes, I had to buy my franchise. It, it cost me 36 grand. Right. Uh, and, and then what happens after that? Do, do you pay them a, on a monthly basis after that? Uh, how, yeah. how does the rest of it work? Oh, I, I had an um, agreement with the um, the old owner, that uh, I pay a thousand dollars a month out of my remuneration, so that took me three years to pay that off. So, so you pay the owner, the previous owner of the franchise, and do you pay Fastway as well? No, I didn't, because she owned that uh, franchise before me. So, you know, thirty-six grand wasn't too much, but you know, over three years it oh, yeah. paid itself off. So, so there's not a percentage you pay to Fastway. 
Uh, it comes out of our ticket sales. Oh, okay, yes. so they they do it automatically. Yes. So so when you're thinking about this, the support and advice. Did you get any other support and advice before going with the franchise? Did you talk to your Farno? Did you talk to other than the other the franchise owner? No, it was really on my father-in-law that gave me a lot of coaching in how how to operate it and how to run it. So what do you think the biggest challenges are for, for running a franchise? The biggest challenges is to... Oh, get up. You have to get up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> is that well, a challenge for you? That's one of the <laughs> challenges, you know. Four o'clock in the morning, that's quite early. You know. Four o'clock in the morning? Yeah, to get up, have a shower. So breakfast. tell me a bit about your typical day. Uh, well, it starts off, you know, getting to work at five, um, unloading our cages, um, putting it on different bays because we all work as a team down in Tauranga Fastways. Uh, and then it's all a matter of just sorting our bays, putting it in, all, in order. So you sort them all out and then you're out visiting all your customers. Yep. So, so the surprise, Supreme Award that you got, was yep. that a surprise? Uh, it was actually. Um, I was nominated to go to the Westpac Franchise Awards. Um, I passed the cut-off stage and to me, I was um, quite surprised with that. Yeah. So why do you think you won? What was the key thing about winning that, to you, that was the, the key ingredient? Well, it's all about my customer service. That's what it comes down to. You know, I had um, over 50 nominations for me to... 50 to nominations be, yes, for your customers? Yeah, from all my customers. Mind you, more came in after the cut-off cut -off time, so... But yeah, 50 so, what's, so what's the most rewarding bit about your business? The most rewarding bit. The most rewarding. Uh, it's about just working with my customers, working alongside them, with them, and maintaining them and re you know, and retaining them. Now I understand your your Fano. You started the business with yourself, but I understand yes. your Fano becoming involved now too. Yes, I have my two daughters working with me at the moment. Um, one's pregnant and had to take a bit of time off, so my other daughters stepped up to the challenge and came back to work. Uh, so how do you find working with, with, with your daughters? Do, do they tell you what to do? Now and again they do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a good challenge for both of us and them, you know, working together as a team. Um, and just really focusing on my customer base and service. So, what do you think that your your um, your girls, your your daughters, will learn going forward? I mean, it's it's being in business together. There's a bunch of skills I'm sure you're learning. Oh, it is. It is. And um, what's the future for them? Well, for them, is to really get them to own their own franchise one day or run their own business. So, for me, you know, for me, that's the biggest thing. So, Bill, would you recommend franchising for Farno? Yes, I would. Um, Why do you think it's important for Farno? Uh, well, it gives them a chance to get out there and show what they're made of. You know, because you know, quite often Māori are very good at working together, eh? And how have you found that in your business? Well, like we say, working with my daughters has been pretty good, you know, giving them a head start in life. And, and do you see, are there many other Māori courier drivers? Yes, there are. Yep, we've got a, quite a few down in Tauranga itself, so... So in, so in Tauranga, um, they work together as a team, oh, like a Fano. Yep, like a Fano team. Right, so last question. What's the best advice you've ever been given? Well, the best advice I've been given was, you know, when I was made redundant in the wood processing industry, uh, the best advice I was given was to buy a franchise and to get in there and make it work. Get in there and make it work. Kia ora, Bill. Uh, thanks for coming along. Talk with Ricardo Motene Wiki. A couple of things to think about. Now, two New Zealand franchise companies, here they are, Fastway Couriers, were started by Bill McGowan in Napier in 1983. Now they operate in eight countries and 1,600 franchises around the world. Another New Zealand company, Les Mills. They now operate in 75 countries 12,000 gyms, three and a half million people exercise to their programs every week. So think globally.